This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Rappaport to the rescue with award-winning animal advocate Jill Rappaport. Welcome to Rappaport to the Rescue. I'm Jill Rappaport. And if you tuned in to our last podcast, and we hope you all did, we did a really interesting show, something I've never done before, where we had a celebrity on, Sailor Brinkley Cook, with her brand new puppy. And we actually did a training session that went on for almost three weeks. And today, we are going to get the results thanks to our wonderful partner in crime, Bill Berloni, who is joining me now. Bill, this has been really fun because we got to see firsthand from you and Sailor what the puppy was like when you first picked him up. We interviewed both of you while you had the puppy. Sailor was on an island and she was talking about missing the puppy and she was in tears. And now Lionel has been returned to Sailor and we are going to hear firsthand the results. Yep, that's right, Jill. You know, this is my life, helping people out with their dogs, whether they're young or they're old. But to be able to use our platform, our podcast, to actually educate our listeners as to what some of those processes are to get your dog trained is just fantastic. Now, this is a second for you. Many years ago, when Meredith Vieira literally brought her senior dog to you for a multiple week training session, hoping that old dogs can learn new tricks and you really turn Jasper around. How did Lionel progress? Lionel was a really well-balanced puppy. He was a little old when I got him. He was already like five months old and there should have been some basic stuff going on, but we caught him up on that. We caught him up on his socialization. We caught him up on his manners. And then I started to teach him how fun it was to learn, how to learn to listen to people. And that's where I ended and turned it over to Sailor. And we should mention that Sailor is the daughter of supermodel and actor and environmentalist Christy Brinkley, one of my closest friends in the world. I've known Sailor since she was literally in her mom's womb. And she was so afraid to give up Lionel, even for a few weeks. She thought he wouldn't know her anymore. And we're going to hear from her all about that. But Bill, as you told her, hopefully she'll have 18 years with this puppy. And this was a really important thing for her to do, wasn't it? It was. And that's what's great about Sailor. She is an animal lover. So she's doing things right. And that's the example we want to show all people, you know, especially young people who think that, oh, just getting, let's just get a dog and, you know, we'll raise it. No, there's a lot of work that goes into it. And Sailor's serious about this. So that's why I think she's going to do just fine. And did you think you made great progress? Oh, yeah. Again, he's a very smart little dog, doesn't have any really attitude. So he's just looking to be led in the right direction. But if you don't lead them in the wrong direction, they tend to go to the dark side. And we don't want our dogs to go to the dark side. Well, I am very blessed not only to have you as one of my dearest friends in the world, but Lord knows I've called those chits in where I've asked you about different things. And, you know, you've been so helpful to me from my dogs eating furniture to hot spots to even sadly cancer situations and what to do and how to handle things that really brought me to tears every minute of the day. And you are truly an amazing trainer and you have a new project going on that is so exciting. In fact, people can tune in this weekend. Tell us about it on playbill.com. Well, you know, I'm a showbiz guy. Theater is where (laughs) I started and Broadway is where I live. But with the pandemic, theater shut down. I mean, we're fortunate to be able to do podcasts and some TV, but we've all been missing theater. And so Playbill, which is the largest theatrical resource in the world, came up with ways to bring experts live to their audiences. So they have a program called Playbill Selects, where they bring in experts and they ask us to do a show. Now, what's different about this, Jill, is that it's not recorded. So it's one time only, just like you would if you were in a theater. No playback, (laughs) no redos. So I've done lectures, I've done shows all over the country. So they tapped me to do a series called Tales from the Stage, which once again, I take one of my Broadway shows, talk about the rescue story involved, the training that went along with it, and even invite some of the cast members or directors back to uh, go over their recollections of the show. And sadly, some of these animals that were stars of those shows are not with us anymore. But for the ones that are around, and people can watch this on Playbill.com, do you actually have the animals with you? 
I do. My first performance was last weekend. I talked about the original production of Annie. So, you know, I demonstrated with the latest Sandy, the one who was on Broadway in 2012. This week, we're doing Legally Blonde, the musical, which was done 12 years ago on Broadway. And while the original dogs have passed away, there are now replacements taking over those roles and traveling all around the country. So we'll talk about how the original dogs got to their parts and how these new rescue dogs got to these parts and how they'll be able to be seen all over the country. Well, Bill, you have proven show business truly is your life. And when can people watch this? You could watch it this Sunday, April 25th, live at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You get to talk to me live via Skype. You can ask me questions. We have polls. We have discussions. So the audience is right there with me, and you're able to communicate as we're doing the show. Go to Playbill.com, click on Tales from the Stage, and watch the show. Well, Bill, you certainly know how to plug. And when we come back, we are going to hear from Sailor Brinkley Cook with her puppy, Lionel. We want to hear the final results, how he progressed, coming up. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There's no other pet related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise, on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Spanning the planet. Spanning the planet. You've landed at the Pet Entertainment Center of the Universe. Alert the paparazzi. This is Pet Life Radio, the ultimate animal adventure. Welcome back to Rappaport to the Rescue. I'm Jill Rappaport, and I am now joined with the beautiful Sailor Brinkley Cook and a very anxious, excited, furry child of hers. There's Lionel. Sailor, I know nobody is happier than you to be reunited with your fur angel. Oh, I'm so happy. Hi, Jill. Hi, Bill. Hi, guys. Yeah, Bill Berloni is with us, <laughs> and you know he is the master that made this possible. Let me hear how Lionel has progressed. Oh my goodness. Well, first of all, I'm so happy to have him back. I mean, the last time we did this podcast, I was like a shell of myself because I missed him so much and I'm so happy and he's grown so much and he's just like a whole new little like mature dog. And the training was like instrumental in his progress, like in his maturity, like he's just so much more responsive, so much more attentive. I mean, the eye contact is so much more like no matter what's going on, he's with me, which is amazing because the last time that I saw him, you know, it was sort of like 70% of the time he was very attentive to me, but depending on the circumstances, whether we were outside and there was other people, whether there was a bunch of people in the kitchen, whatever was happening, it was very easy for him to get distracted. And what I've noticed I mean, so many things that we'll get to, but I've noticed the most is his just complete attentiveness. And Bill gave me some things to work on with him that I've been doing every day. And I take him on a leash and I walk him around just like an area in our kitchen. And I say, Lionel, heal. And he follows me completely. And then once we're done with our little walk around, making sure that he follows me, I tell him to sit. He sits, lies down, lies down, gets back up, gets back up. And there hasn't even been a moment where he hasn't done it. I mean, he learned so much and he's so eager to continue to please. So it's been really amazing. Even just now, usually he runs off into the other room. All of the doors have been open. Like he's been so much less interested in going other places. He's just with me. And if I say Lionel heel and I move my arm like this, he comes to me in one second. I mean, it's been so crazy. I love this because everything you're saying was the exact fear you had that he wouldn't be attentive. He wouldn't know you anymore. He wouldn't miss you. He all of a sudden, you wouldn't be his mommy. And meanwhile, it's the opposite. He's more attentive and loving and with you than he was before he left. Yeah, exactly. And it's actually so true. He's so much more attentive, like so much more present. 
and so much less like distracted of anything that's going on. Even now, especially I noticed, so we have our other dog, Chester and Chester is a very big barker. Oh, we know. No matter, you know, it's still. yeah. <laughs> and no matter like what's going on in the house, if one person walks in, there's a noise, whatever he's barking like crazy. Lionel has now, I mean, it must've been what he learned with Bill because he now when Chester starts barking and sort of freaking out towards like the door and everything, Lionel will run over, sort of assess it and then make one bark. I'll say Lionel quiet and he'll stop barking, run back to me and sit right next to me to like, just watch what's going on. Unbelievable. And this is a puppy, ladies and gentlemen. Do you understand? This is like a very, very young dog. And literally, he learned all of these things thanks to the wonderful Bill Berloni in three weeks' time. And Bill, look, you had something great to start with. I mean, I'm sure you've had a lot more difficult animals in your career. But it's still pretty miraculous how fast he's come along in 21 days. Yeah. I mean, I see a little bit of myself in a sailor in that we both love our animals deeply. And, you know, I knew they had that relationship. So the way I've always trained my animals is that letting them know that I care, that if you work with me, things are going to be great. And that's all I taught the puppy. I mean, he was just a little distracted. But once he realized, when he started focusing on me, that things were going to get better, we were going to have more fun, we were going to be closer, you know, that was where it clicked for him that, oh, when I get home, I want to do that with Sailor. And I just gave her the tools to rebuild that relationship. I mean, the love was always there, but now he's getting more love for doing the right things. Well, and you mentioned the word tools. Hey, this training process is like a diet. You know, people get on a diet, you stay on it, you look great, you feel great, but then you slowly start to cheat and then the weight slowly comes back and you don't feel as good. Same philosophy with training. If Sailor lets up at all, as time goes on, he's going to regress. This is a constant process. What people forget is that it's not doing exercises every day. It's saying their name, asking them to do it once, rewarding them with a good boy or something if they do it right. And if they don't, make them do it. That's the key. That's the training. And Sailor, I hope it becomes natural for you to say the words in those order and do those things, because that's the training. And That's so much of it is the people. I mean, Bill, we've talked about this, you know, about various clients you've had where the wife is great, but the husband won't reinforce it. And then you can't do your job. Sailor, you really have to be authoritative on an hourly basis to continue this. And Sailor, you have the personality to do it. You are committed to make him the perfect and best dog he can be. Yeah. I mean, I think that as you're saying, like there's always someone else in the house who doesn't really want to enforce the same, you know, that those same things. So I've just sort of, especially in the past, I mean, I've only been with him for the past like three days, but since I've been back with him, I've been really just keeping him very like focused on me and like the training that we're doing together so that nothing really gets us distracted. And then I think my mom is because my mom, she's not the best with, with the training, you know, she's, <laughs> dogs, she's like, good with kisses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They, she treats the dogs with just like, oh, they're, but they're their own person. So like, that's their person. Oh, oh, quiet. Lionel, quiet. Okay. Better than my dogs. <laughs> Bill, aren't you impressed? Three little yep. barks and he stopped. That's yep. very encouraging. Go ahead, sailors. I think that that's going to be one of his toughest things is the barking because that's Chester. what Chester does. So it's, I think that's going to be something really tough, but I always enforce just like one quiet. If he doesn't, I pull him over to me. And so he's learning now to just come right to me. Usually if there's like, if we're in the kitchen and he sees the door right now, the door is closed, so he can't see it. But yeah, I mean, it's hard to get everyone on the same page, but I think that soon in the next week or so, because my mom is already seeing like, the changes in Lionel. I mean, he doesn't mouth anyone anymore. He's not like reaching for anyone with his teeth. He's just reaching for kisses and he's being very respectful and he's very attentive. And so I think that she's going to get inspired to enforce the, the little tools. One of the first things I said to her was, you got to worry about the rest of the family, you know, not following the rules because it'll make it harder for you and your relationship. So whether it's parenting a puppy or parenting a child, you know, when you have outside people spoiling them, doing things that you don't approve of, it interferes with your relationship with your fur baby. You know, it, that is interesting what you say, Bill, because also in Sailor's home, there's a third dog, Jack's girlfriend, Nina. Who just got home, by the way, so Lionel's freaking out. 
Oh, my goodness. I love her. Her name is Daisy. Crazy Daisy. She is the most affectionate, rambunctious. Oh, she's unbelievable. But, Bill, how does Sailor manage Lionel if two other dogs in the household are kind of running amok? It's really difficult. I mean, imagine you having two best friends and your two best friends get to eat candy in front of you and you can't. I mean, it's just that temptation where if the others can, why can't I? But this would be a different case if Sailor were younger and she was gonna be living at home for the next 10 years. But she's a young woman who's just starting her life off with this dog. And I wanna give her the tools so that when she does go off on her own, you know, they will be like two peas in a pod and they will be able to go anywhere and do anything. So, you know, Sailor, do the work now, stick with it, you know, and it'll pay off when you have your own place and your own life and he'll be perfect and they'll be running amok back at home. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's like the best point to make too, is that if you do the work now, that's okay. Very excited. Dog. Daisy, very excited. I'm being a bad mom, not letting him, but no, you're not. Bill okay. actually He's says still that's learning. He's still learning. <laughs> but yeah, I mean like doing the work now, it's just, I already notice, especially after he, he came home, wow. the second he came home so much more with me, so much more attentive. And when we're on a plane or traveling or all of the things that I want to do and take him all along with me, I need him to be a hundred percent with me, no matter what's going on around me. So that's a very important point for me, which I'm very happy that to be working on right now. And we, uh, you know, I mentioned it in the open, you have a very exciting career and you started when you were 15 years old, a very long seven years ago, being that you're 22 now, incredible model. I know you're very involved with nutrition now, and we will hear about that as the months go on. You could perhaps be going back to the city, maybe getting another apartment. Obviously, Lionel's going to be with you. How do you anticipate that change? That especially, actually, that's a very good point because my mom, she's very like, let a dog bark, like a dog is supposed to bark. You have to, you know, and I somewhat agree with that, but I think also going back to the city, that's another thought to sort of catch that and be able to at least control when he is barking or make him know that it's not the best thing for him to do very loudly. Especially if you're living in an apartment. Because in an apartment, it's, it's impossible to keep an apartment if you have a crazy barking dog. So all of these things are just setting me up for success in whatever area of life ends up happening, you know, after COVID, which is a mystery right now. But Lionel is a pandemic puppy that needs to be able to do not pandemic activities, right. <laughs> like you with a big group of people or be in an apartment. So those are the things that I'm I'm definitely excited to be preparing for. And you know, Sailor, as I also mentioned in the open, and we talked about the last show, I've literally known you since you were in your mom's womb, watched you grow up. You've had animals around you your whole life. You had Maple, you know, Chester came in. I got him for you. And I, I really have seen you all your life around these animals. You've always loved them. Tell us what Lionel has meant to you in this stage of your life. I've always been obsessed with animals. I mean, I've had birds, I've had gerbils, I've had bunnies, I've had dogs. I think the only animal I haven't had is a cat, which is funny. But you have one in the house. Alexa has her cat. Alexa has one in the house. So there's always been a bunch of animals around me and I've always wanted a bond with one where, you know, this bond of being able to take him wherever I go, always with me, always able to put up, be put on a leash, even if we're at like a restaurant or anything, just be a very great sort of just partner in crime. And I've always wanted that with an animal. And I, so I've had all of these different dogs and different animals, but since I've been a kid and I've had to go off to school for, you know, eight hours in the day, I mean, it's impossible to really be there to form the bond. So with Lionel, I mean, it means so much to me to have this time with him at home, to be 100% present with him, you know, work on the training and make sure that he's bonded with me and that we have this respectful, like amazing relationship as like friends. And I feel like I'm like his like mother dog. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are called now a pet parent. That's what you yes. are. Exactly. And it's just amazing because with all of the other animals that I've had in my life, they've always sort of belonged to my mom. So this is very different. And your mom, of course, being Christy Brinkley. But I have to tell you, this is such an awkward time because it's COVID. You know, how does this affect like even socially? I mean, Lionel's become like your soulmate, hasn't he? 
Oh my gosh, Lionel, is literally. It's so funny because when I was on vacation, I couldn't talk about anything else. Like it was just so hilarious. Like I was like, can I show you photos of my dog? Can I show you photos of my dog? He's just the best dog. He's just the sweetest dog. You guys, would really, you would really like my dog. Like, I think you would get along with my dog. It's very funny how like connected you get to these little animals because they just show you this, this like unconditional love. You know, humans are so complicated and dogs, if they're taught right, can be the most like easy, just beautiful little loving animals. And it's just, it's really incredible. I can attest to her obsession because she was texting me every day, send more pictures, send more pictures. And one day I said, enjoy your vacation for a day. Well, it was funny because I remember Christy calling me saying, well, we're supposed to go away, but I don't think Sailor's going to go. She doesn't want to leave the puppy. So it was a tremendous amount of pressure on my shoulders. Bill, I know how great you are, but we're also dealing with this incredible bond. It was the first time she was going to be separated from this puppy. You're taking him off to a place Sailor doesn't know, hasn't seen. So there was a lot riding on this. I knew you would do a great job, but I had to convince Sailor that it was okay to say goodbye for a few weeks. And literally, you were going to give up your whole vacation. Well, my family was supposed to go for three weeks, like at the start, you know, and I said three weeks, like, are you kidding me? That's a lifetime. And in my little puppy's life, I need to be back in a week. So a week came and then a week went and then another week came and another week went. And then it just, I was having a lot of fun. And I was just sort of, my mom too, was also like, this is good for him. Like, this is not a bad thing. And if you're enjoying yourself here, you should take this time and come back home with us when we're coming home, which was also something that Bill said with, you know, when I was going to only go for a week and my family was going to go for three weeks, it was going to be two weeks of just Lionel and I alone, which doesn't really help the sort of separation anxiety concept and, you know, him being respectful of other people with these, like, I need my mom and Jack and Nina and and Alexa to utilize the tools as well to make them useful. So I was just sort of validating all of these things to make my vacation longer and to make myself feel better. And it's true. I came back and it is true. And I can completely attest to the fact that sending your puppy away just for those three weeks is so special and important for his development because he's just his whole personality. I mean, it's the same Lionel. It's not like his personality changed, but he's so much more mature, so much more attentive, so much more capable. When I go to the bathroom, he's not chasing after me. You know, he sits down on the couch and he's like, okay, I know she'll be back because she left me for quite a while last time and she came back. So, And you know, you made a very good point sending him away to the right trainer. And again, most of us are never going to have an opportunity to get the one-on-one at home with Bill Berloni, but it's a very important message for our listeners that it's important that these puppies get a strong foundation because that's what sets the tone for the rest of their lives. And now looking back, it was truly the best thing you could have done for Lionel. It really was. And I'm so happy that I, you know, put my fears aside of him not being attached to me anymore or anything and allowed him to get the best thing is like Bill explained it, like his house is like Disneyland. It's like summer camp almost sort of too. Like I expressed it like summer camp because he's obviously going to miss me, but he comes back so much more mature and independent and he learned all of these things and he socialized with all these other dogs. I mean, it's just such a important thing. Like you, like you never want your little kid to go off to their first day of school, but you know, it's the best thing to do for them. That's sort of what I think about this whole training experience. And it obviously paid off because he's just been so incredible. You can't have a better endorsement than that, Bill. And I have to tell you, having known you all these years and taking strays and literally putting them on the Broadway stage, have you ever had one that didn't work? Because this is again, another Bill Berloni success story. Every living creature has a destiny and we can't always control what that should be. And so if I adopt a dog and for whatever reason, it trains really well, but doesn't like lights on a set, there's nothing I can do about that, you know? And at that point we go, okay, you're retired. And in most cases, the dogs always succeed. It's the humans that fail them. And to put this into perspective, because Sailor got Lionel when he was a little older as a puppy, If she had gotten him at eight weeks or 10 weeks old, she could have gone to a puppy class. There are puppy classes of socialization in YMCAs all over the country. And that's the first thing you want to do. So I just sort of fast tracked him to get him up to speed because you didn't have that. So you you get a puppy, you bring them to puppy class. And then when they get to be like eight or nine months old, you go to another training class. So in Sayworth's case, we were able to bring him up to speed socialization and start training him into his adulthood. 
So um, I'm so glad I was able to do that for you, Sayor. Yeah. And listen, Bill was very honest. He said, hey, I think I did a really good job. And on this second podcast, Sailor, you have to tell it like it is. And if she found that there were things that were not solved or he might have gotten worse in an area, Sailor, you were going to tell us. I know you are the perfect pet parent to do this. You're very disciplined and you will see this through. I know you. Oh, I have to. I mean, it's just uh, these past three days have been so incredible because he's so fresh off of, you know, Bill's teachings. And so he's really eager to please. So if I continue this and I continue doing the work, I know that he'll be the absolute best puppy. Well, he already is. But, you know, I think that the attentiveness, he doesn't run away. He doesn't mouth anyone. He doesn't bark as much. I mean, it's everything. He's so good. So I need to keep it up. It's a motivating factor how amazing he's been these past three days. (laughs) And I'm going to give you another motivating factor. We're going to stay in touch with you and follow up with another show a few months down the road. How is that for keeping you on your toes? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Now that's actually, I really got to do it. (laughs) Exactly. Well, Sailor, thank you so much. Lionel, you're gorgeous, but our listeners, boy, you should see this doggy. Look. Looks like he's double the size from the last time we saw him. <laughs> and Bill, great work as always. So wonderful that you were able to have this opportunity with Sailor, and it was a success. Thank you all for tuning in to another Rappaport to the Rescue. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs>